burial and resurrection of Jesus gives us power and authority over every lie and scheme of the devil. And if you believe that, give him a shout. And I've been saying this, Christians live like this, up, they're up one minute, they're down the next. Up, down, up, down. Why do you keep saying this week in and week out, Pastor Brian? Because I want it to sink into your spirit. They say you have to say something at least 21 times. And in the world, they say to do sales, you have to say it at least seven times. And so I'm trying to get something into your spirit so that you receive it. So I want you to understand this. Christians, I've seen for a long time, up, down, up, down. What do you mean by that? When their prayers are being answered, man, I'm good with Jesus. But when I don't, when I'm walking through the valley of the shadow of death, I'm going to quit on Jesus. Up, down, up, down. When your prayer didn't get answered the way you wanted it to get answered, you're down. When God challenges you, you're down. You're up, down, up, down. And I tell people, Satan starts to attack you down here. And all of a sudden, you're messed up for a while. Some attacks, some fiery darts of the enemy start being thrown at you. And you're down. And I tell people this, and I've been saying it here. Jesus did not die on the cross and shed his precious blood so you could walk in 50% victory. He didn't die and shed his blood so you could walk in 75% victory. He did not die and shed his blood so you could walk in 90% victory. He died and shed his precious blood so we could live and walk in 100% victory all the days of our life. That's not taught anymore because we don't think that's possible. But that's the power of the blood of Jesus. That's power of the death, the burial, and resurrection of Jesus. What are you saying? We're never going to have any problems, trials, or tribulation? Absolutely not. I guarantee you, you'll have problems. I guarantee you'll have trials. I guarantee you'll go through it. But I'm saying there is a power that lives within you that you can have 100% total victory even when you're walking through the valley of the shadow of death, you can have victory. Even when you're walking in the fire, you can realize there's a fourth man in the fire there with you. When you're in the middle of, you can have 100% total victory. What are you saying? I'm not saying that no weapon won't be formed. I'm just saying that weapon won't prosper. We have a power, the same spirit lives in you that raised Jesus Christ from the dead. I'm believing for some radical things this year. I'm believing for some things that should be normal in the body of Christ, but we have abandoned. I'm believing this year is a year of not just miracles, signs and wonders, but I'm believing for total victory for you and your family. You ain't hear me. I'm believing for total victory. No more up, down, up, down, up, down. No more defeated Christians. No more putting your head down and moping in the corner. No more crying over spilled milk and half-eaten cookies. Come on, somebody. I'm here to tell you we got victory in the name above every name. The victory of Jesus you don't have victory in what you can do. You have victory in what he already did. We got victory in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. Can I get a loud amen? Revelation chapter 12, starting at verse 9. I'm going to read probably just to verse 12. It reads like this. So the great dragon was cast out. The serpent of old, called the devil and Satan, who deceives the whole world. He was cast to the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. 
Then I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, now salvation and strength in the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ have come. For the accuser of the brethren who accused them before our God day and night has been cast down. And they overcame. And they overcame him. Who's him? Satan. And they overcame the devil by the blood they overcame him the devil by their blood they overcame the devil him by the blood of the lamb let me tell you who that is his name is Jesus Christ the lamb that was slain and by the word of their testimony. And they did not love their lives to the death. Therefore rejoice, O heavens, and you who dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and the sea, for the devil has come down to you having great wrath because he knows that he has a short time. They overcame the devil. They overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. I want you to know here today, church, as we are celebrating the death of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, it is something to celebrate because he doesn't stay dead. And so we know the whole story. We celebrate because we know three days later, the grave and death couldn't hold him. And he went into the throne room of the enemy and snatched the keys of the kingdom of off. Of See, earlier in the passage, he's called the great dragon, the serpent of old, the devil and Satan. We must learn how to overcome the enemy. I have a passion right now to teach people how to fight the good fight of faith. I, I have a passion to see people walk in total victory that comes from Jesus Christ. I have a passion to see you not up and down in every area of your life. I see so many Christians and so many leaders up, down, up, down. I, I don't think we will reap the end time harvest this way. I don't think we'll see souls come into the kingdom by the millions this way, by the billions this way. I think we have to understand that there's a victory you have. There's a power and an authority you have and you got to tap into it. You got to understand it lives in you. You got to stop relying on your own strength. You got to stop relying on the strength of your husband or your wife or your sister or your brother or your auntie or your uncle or your mama or your grandmother. You have to have a relationship with the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords for yourself. I have a desire to see people get in their word daily, to pray daily, to get back into the basic foundation of Christianity where we are in our word and we are studying our word and we're studying to show ourselves approved. We're in the word so much that when the enemy attacks, we don't, we don't buy it because we have an answer. We'll say it is written. When the enemy comes in, we say, look, if God be for me, who could be against me? When the enemy starts to attack, we say, greater is he that lives in me than he that lives in the world. See, if you stay ready, you don't gotta get ready. And I'm trying to get you to stay ready because I believe if we stay ready, we will see miracle signs and wonders increase in our life more than we could ever ask think or imagine I believe that we will see increase in almost every area of our life but I think so many Christians and so many leaders only 
call out to God, only dive deep into their word when things, when trouble comes, I should say. Jesus is not your 911 number. He's so much more than that. Now, will he help you in your time of need? Absolutely. But if he's only 911, you're missing out on so much. You've only tapped into a little bit of Jesus. If he's only your ever present help in time of need, you're missing that he is, um, you're missing that he is the great physician. You're missing that he makes a way where there seems to be no way. You're missing out on his wisdom and his revelation. You're missing out on the word becoming alive in you and shining forth like the noonday sun. You ain't hearing me yet. You're missing the power and the authority, the prophetic mantle that God wants to drop on some of us here tonight. You're missing all that because he's just your 911 call when you don't know what to do. But if you are in your word daily, praying daily, seeking God daily, if you ever only, for married folk, if you're married, tap your spouse and say, I love you. Say, baby, if I only, now this is for the men. Say, baby, if I only talked to you when I was in trouble. Some of you wouldn't have no baby no more. Come on, somebody. You got to understand, you need to have a relationship. We have to tell people this again. Because their relationship consists of coming to church maybe once a week. And that is their relationship with God. And in America, most pastors would consider someone coming to church once a week a good thing. But when you really look at it, they're probably just in their word that day because the pastor puts it on the screen. That's not staying ready. That will produce up and down, up and down. Now it can be masked, you know, with good leadership principles, you can hide your up and down a little bit. With some good technical training, you can mask a few things. Some of the things even the world will teach you, you can mask it a little bit. But eventually the up and down will come out. And I'm here to tell you, God wants you to live in total victory. And you may say, that's impossible. Nothing is impossible with God. And let me tell you, it's not in what you do. It's what he already did. Don't diminish the work on the cross. Don't diminish his precious blood. It has power. Type your name and say, it's got power. If you are a child of God, when you become saved, you are a overcomer. And God wants you to continue to overcome. You are a overcomer. See, there is a weapon that we aren't even using today. I believe it's the ultimate greatest weapon that the church doesn't know how to use. And it hasn't been taught how to use in so long that there's a generation that doesn't know how to use it. See, I believe it's the greatest and ultimate weapon. Now, there are natural weapons. I always tell people we live in two worlds. In the spiritual world, and in the natural world. And in the natural world, you have all sorts of weapons. You have swords, you have bow and arrow, you have rifles, you have pistols, you have machine guns, you have missiles, you have, you name it, tanks. You have all sorts of weapons. They are natural, physical weapons. The weapons we use are not carnal, are not natural, they're spiritual. And so I want you to understand you have a spiritual weapon at your disposal and I'm going to teach you how to use it tonight and I'm going to believe that you're going to walk in a victory. I've been waiting for this day for weeks now.
because I believe you're going to walk in a victory that you've never experienced ever in your life. What if you left here tonight? Let me just plant this seed in you. What if you left here tonight and you had a victory that would change the literal course of your life? How can victory change my life? Instead of being up and down and being led by emotion and led by drama and led by this and led by that, you will be led by the victory that comes from Jesus Christ and it will take you on a new trajectory that you could not have accomplished in your own strength. There's a power when you're victorious. There's an authority when you walk in victory. It changes your lineage. When you have power and authority, it changes your children. It changes your grandchildren. I'm trying to get your great grandchildren, if we're still around, I'm trying to get them blessed. Come on, somebody. I'm trying to get them to say, my mama, my daddy, my grandma, my grandpa, my great grandma and my great grandpa, they started serving Jesus and they did things that you couldn't even imagine. And they passed down a victory. See, in my opinion, it's the ultimate weapon. The devil's afraid of it. You can use it, this weapon at your home, at your job, wherever you go. See, God did not plan for his children to be defeated by the devil. God has not planned for you to be defeated. There's no plan in scripture. There's no plan that God created to say, you know what? When you're all defeated, he did not plan that for you. He gave you a power. Now, if you yield your power over to the enemy because he lies and deceives and you fall, God says, look, you'll get back up. But you don't have to live that way. He didn't plan defeat for you. He planned victory for you. You're his children. It'd be like you. You don't plan defeat for your children. Tap your neighbor. Say, you got to understand. Romans 8, 37 says this. Yet in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. I don't know about you, but you're a conqueror in Christ. God has not planned for you to be defeated. Quite the opposite. He has planned through the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus for you to live victorious in him. John 1 verse 29 says, The next day John saw Jesus coming toward him, and, and he said, Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. This is he of whom I said, after me comes a man who is preferred before me, for he was before me. I did not know him, but that he should be revealed to Israel. Therefore, I came baptized with water, and John bore witness, saying, I saw the Spirit descending from heaven like a dove, and he remained upon him. I did not know him, but he who sent me to baptize with water said to me, upon whom you see the spirit descending and remaining on him, this is he who baptizes with the Holy Spirit. And I have seen and testified that this is the Son of God. John is baptizing converts in water. And Jesus comes down the road and he says, Behold the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. Jesus needed to be baptized. Jesus hadn't confronted the devil yet. He hadn't confronted the enemy yet. There's no place in Scripture he confronts the devil until he had this experience and came out of the water. And when he came out of the water, the Holy Ghost came on him in the form of a dove. The heavens opened up and God the Father spoke. This is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. 
Jesus fasted for 40 days and 40 nights. He was led into the wilderness and he confronted the devil. He had to confront him face to face. There will come a time in your life where you have to confront the forces of darkness. Well, maybe if I stay hidden, I will never have to do that. Let me repeat myself. There will come a day where you have to, will, you'll have to square your shoulders back and face demonic forces. And you'll have to fight the good fight of faith. You'll have to entangle in a spiritual warfare. See, there is an enemy out there. And if you are a child of God, don't run from confrontation. He must be confronted. God has never planned on you being defeated. I can't say that enough. I do not mind getting into a spiritual conflict. Why don't you mind that, Pastor Brian? Because I know the outcome before it occurs. How do you know the outcome? Let me read it again. Behold, I give you the authority. I don't just read it like it's a bedtime story. I ingest it like it's 100% the truth, the word of God, living and active, sharper than any double-edged sword. I give you authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy I don't mind getting in a spiritual conflict because I know I'm going to be the winner the devil has no business in your family the, do the devil has no business in your bank account the devil has no business in your body the devil has no business at your house. The devil has no business over your children. The devil has no business over. Greater is he that lives in me than he that lives in the world. The same spirit that raised Jesus Christ from the dead lives in you. He has no business. Well, where does he have a business to be? Well, we've been saying it for a while. Victoria, where, 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 where's his natural position? I've been waking up every morning. People say, what do you do for your devotion? First thing I do is I do a little stomping. Well, that's silly. Call it whatever you want. <laughs> I'm not up and down right now. Come on, somebody. I'm stomping my way to victory every day, and I'm declaring the goodness of God in the land of the living. You need to tell the enemy where his God-given position is. He is under our feet. I don't mind fighting because I know who's going to win. Jesus was confronted three different times. And I'm not talking about the weapon Jesus used on that occasion. I'm thankful for the word of God. How many of the word has power? The word has authority. The word is one of our weapons. But I don't believe it's the ultimate weapon. I know you're not going to like that, but I believe it's one of the greatest weapons we have. The devil said, if you are the son of God, command these stones to be bread. The devil was pushing at Jesus physically because he was in a weak state. 
and Jesus would answer back with the word. And I'm going to, we need to learn to answer back the enemy with the word. The word has power. The word has authority. And this one we've been covering. See, I believe, I believe that even the devil heard. Because the devil can't be in all places at once, but he must have been around that region. And I believe he heard, this is my beloved son whom I'm well pleased. He's saying, if you're the son of God, he's appealing to his physical nature. So you have to face the devil. You have to face the enemy. You have to face the forces of darkness in your life. I want you to understand this. You're not going to get away from it. You're going to have to fight. You're going to have to stand up and fight. Because the enemy's pushed you around. He lies and he deceives. These are his two major forms of weapons. He lies. He gets you to believe a lie. And that lie grows into your mind. And before you know it, the lie spreads. And you have believed a lie and you're defeated. Then he deceives you. He tricks you. And when that happens, you're defeated. You have to learn how to fight the enemy. We have to go on the offensive. Tap your neighbor and say, you need to go on the offensive. Jesus would tell Satan, it is written. I thank God we have the word. I thank God we have the sword of the spirit. And I want you to understand. But I believe there's an ultimate weapon God has given you and me. There, this weapon the enemy is the most afraid of. I'm getting ready to tell you. It's not a physical weapon. Like a machine gun or a missile or a nuclear bomb. But I'm talking about spiritual warfare. Now, I'm leading you down the road. I'm, I'm being slow and intentional about it. See, the enemy of yours and mine, he is the enemy of every believer. You are destined to oppose him. You are destined to oppose him. You must come to a place of confrontation where you say enough is enough. Let me say that again. You must come to a place of confrontation where you say enough is enough. I'm tired. I'm sick and tired of the lies. I'm sick and tired of the deceit. I'm sick and tired of all these things. My children are going to be raised in the house of God and they're going to serve God all their lives. God's going to bless my bank account because I'm going to be a tither. I'm a giver. I'm going to give offerings. I'm going to be blessed to be a blessing. My wife, I tell her all the time back in the day, when anything would go out in our house from a refrigerator or a washer dryer, she would talk to the refrigerator. She'd be like, I'm a tither and you need to be fixed in the name of Jesus. I got seed in the ground. And somehow every time that washer dryer would kick back on, my wife knew how to do that. Come on, somebody. See, the devil is not your friend. The devil wants to destroy you. Get down your spirit. He's not your boy. Come on, somebody. You're not on a highway to hell. Come on, somebody. And you know, you're not drinking brewskis with the devil on a highway to hell. You're gonna burn forever in a lake of fire. It's not a cool place. I know there's a lot of lies out there. So you don't have to lay down or quit because you're destined to be an overcomer. Lift your hands, say, I'm an overcomer. Say, I'm an overcomer. Say, I overcame. I overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of my testimony. See, the ultimate weapon is the blood of Jesus.
The devil hates the blood. The enemy despises the blood. Because when that blood started rolling down off that cross, when the blood started dripping on the ground, that blood was not like my blood, not like your blood. The Bible says the blood was precious. We are not redeemed by gold or silver, but by the precious blood of Jesus. It's the ultimate weapon of the believer. It's the blood of Jesus. But nobody knows how to use this weapon. So we're here on a Good Friday service. And I don't want you to leave here the same way you came in. I don't want you to be up and down and up and down. I don't want you to be defeated every day of your life. And then you have some good days. And before you know it, there's more defeated days than good days. I want to teach you the ultimate weapon. And I want to teach you how to use it. The devil hates the blood. There's power, 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 wonder, working, power. In the precious blood of the Lamb. Well, how do I use this blood? How do I get this blood? I'm going to show you. Calm down. We're getting there. There's power in the blood. I need you to get this in your spirit. This is the ultimate weapon. When you mention the blood, I've seen a lot of people delivered. I've seen a lot of people set free from demonic possession. And anytime you speak to a demon, when you mention the blood, when you mention the blood of Jesus, there's something about the blood and see when that blood began to hit the ground when that blood was dripping down that cross when that blood was being shed for my sin and for your sin that blood was shed for the sin of the world hallelujah we enter the kingdom in we enter into the kingdom through the blood and that's where most Christians stop using the blood at salvation that's where the blood ends the blood could save me but the blood can do so much more the blood has the power to heal you by Jesus's stripes we are healed by those blood stripes we are healed it's the blood of Jesus that heals See, this is the ultimate weapon. We're never meant to sit at a table and negotiate with the enemy. We're called to dominate and take over. So there's no peace treaty with the enemy. Let me, let me talk to some wimpy, wussy Christians here for a minute. There's no playing nice with the devil. Come on, somebody. There's no more negotiation with the devil. Devil... I'm not going to go on this mission trip, so don't mess with my family no more. Get out of here. Come on, somebody. There's no negotiation. There's no strategy for retreating. There's a word in French. I'm going to break out my French. Come on, somebody. I'm going to break it out for Pastor Bill since he's a linguist. Come on, somebody. All of a sudden, he was speaking... Toro this week. I was like, how does he do that? Praise the Lord. Come on, somebody. I'm going to break out my French. There's a word in French. It's called detente. Say, like, go ahead, Pastor Brown, with your French. What does it mean? It means relaxation. It's a term used in war. It's a process of managing relationship with a hostile country in order to preserve peace. 
You're not meant to be in peace with the enemy. You're not meant to negotiate a deal with the devil. There's no backing up as a child of God. There is power, wonder-working power. There's victorious power in the precious blood of Jesus. Matthew eleven twelve 12 says, And from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffers violence, and the violent take it by force. Stop trying to make a truce with the enemy. Stop trying to negotiate terms of peace. Stop trying to understand that maybe if I just stop doing a few things, the enemy will stop messing with me. There are only two options as a Christian. It's either to fight or to perish. And the weapons God gave us, we need to learn to wield this conquering weapon. Jesus was born a, he was born of a woman. So he would die. He was born to die. He knew what he had to accomplish. But he also knew three days later he would raise from the dead. How many are grateful that you know that he raises from the dead? He kept three times in the garden. He cried out to the Father, let this cup pass from me. How many are grateful that he saw me and you through the window of time? And he said, I'm going to go to the cross for Pastor Natalie. I'm going to go to the cross for Victoria. He's going to go to the cross for you. It was the blood of the spotless lamb which was put on the doorpost of every Israelite in Egypt when the death angel would pass over. God protected every one of his children because the blood of the lamb was applied to the doorpost. There's protection from the blood. There's protection in the blood. The blood of Jesus protects. That has, that blood has to be applied to your life and your heart. We have to learn to apply it. Over the years, I've told this story and I'll share it again. You could work all your life at a soap factory and go home and never take a shower and you're dirty. And right next to you the whole time is the power to clean you. But unless you put the soap on your body and to apply it, it doesn't have the power to clean unless you apply it. And we apply it at salvation and we activate it at salvation but we don't apply it in any other area. It is the ultimate weapon that the enemy is afraid of. We know the blood of Jesus will cleanse you from all sin. But have you applied the blood in every area of your life? When you apply it, you activate something. You activate the death and the burial and also the resurrection because that's what makes his blood special. His blood is special. It's precious because he was all God and all man. And so no one took his life. He gave it. And so the blood has power and so what do you mean pastor brian i can apply this blood in my life i'm not saying you got to go and get red paint and put everything red that's not what i'm talking about but i want you to see something here there is power in the blood when i tell the enemy when the enemy is attacking my body and i apply the blood i say look my elder brother the king of kings and the lord of lords 
my precious Savior, Jesus Christ, conquered you on that cross and he shed his blood, not just for my salvation, but for my healing, he has promised me that. So when he's attacking my body, I apply the blood over my body and said, I know what the blood does. The blood heals, the blood saves, the blood heals. When there's an attack over my family, I apply the blood because the blood protects. The blood protects my family. I apply it and I activate it. I say, this blood is represented of the death and burial of Jesus Christ it is the blood that conquered death hell and the grave it is the blood that was shed for my sins it was the blood that when it dripped down it had the power to save heal delivered it's the blood the blood has power the blood has power it's not ordinary blood it's a spotless lamb it's a lamb without blemish Jesus lived a sinless life I know the movies will try to say he had 55 girlfriends and now they try to say that he would you know all sorts of crazy stuff let me tell you that's a lie from the pit of hell the Bible said he lived a sinless life that's what made his blood precious this blood has power this blood activates something from another realm this blood is not from this world this blood is different than every other blood known to man Ephesians 6 10 I'm gonna read just through 17 I'm gonna read it in the amplified version and we're gonna we're gonna get ready to take communion In conclusion, be strong in the Lord. Be empowered through your union with him. Draw your strength from him. That strength, which is his boundless might provides. Put on God's whole armor. The armor of a heavy armed soldier which God supplies. Pause there. God has given us an armor. It's not a worldly or earthly armor. It's an armor from God. You have to Put it on again. It's one of the things you got to apply. See, in spiritual warfare, you have to apply a lot of things. You have to put things on, apply the blood. You have to activate the word. You have to speak the word. These things are things you have to do in spiritual warfare. That you may be able to successfully to stand up against all not some not half not a quarter give me a shout right now if you believe you can stand up to some things i'm getting ready to get jiggy here in a second all the strategies and the deceits of the devil for we are not wrestling with flesh and blood contending only with physical opponents but against the this is a real good word here this is help me baby you do that you're you're so good with words despotisms against the powers against the master spirit who are the world rulers of this present darkness against the spiritual forces of wickedness in the heavenly supernatural sphere therefore put on god's complete armor then we got to put it on come on that you may be able to resist 
and stand your ground on the evil day of danger and having done all the crisis demands to stand firmly in your place stand therefore hold your ground having tightened the belt of truth around your loins and having put on the breastplate of integrity and a moral rectitude is that right baby come on go ahead and right standing with god and having shod your feet this is my favorite part in preparation to face the enemy with firm footed stability the promptness and the readiness produced by the good news let me read that one all day what are they saying you better you better stay ready so you don't have to get ready to face the enemy with firm footed stability the promptness and readiness produced by good news of the gospel of peace lift up all the covering shield of saving faith upon which you can quench all the flaming missiles of the wicked one and take the helmet of salvation and the sword that the spirit wields which is the word of god come on stand to your feet hallelujah we read a bunch of defensive weapons except one which is the sword the blood of jesus is the ultimate weapon jesus carried me to the cross he carried you to the cross when he died i died when jesus was buried i was buried when he rose i rose has the blood been applied to every area of your life or is it just used for salvation how do we use this weapon you must apply it just like the armor you must put it on how do we put on something that is seemingly invisible this is how you do it when you apply something in spiritual warfare when you put it on when you apply the blood when you put on the helmet of salvation the breastplate of righteousness the belt of truth the shoes of the readiness of the gospel of peace by lifting up the shield of faith when you apply these things to your life you are taking something from the spirit world from the supernatural realm and you're bringing it also into the natural realm and so you're calling those things forth you're declaring them you're speaking them and then you're also so if you're applying the full armor on your life if i'm wearing the full armor victoria and i have god's armor on me i'm not gonna walk like this I don't have the armor on then because when you know you're protected you don't walk like that when you know how to have victory you don't act like that so what you say and how you act and how you live also shows what you've applied so when you've applied something when you put it over your life you act confident in the middle of a storm when you put the blood over your body even the doctor's report says something different you know you have victory because you've applied the blood over you i've applied and activated the blood over my body no matter what the report says i choose to believe the report of the lord i'm going to act I'm going to speak and I'm going to begin to praise God 
I'm gonna speak healing. I'm gonna act healing. I am gonna be healing. I'm gonna walk around like I'm healed. Well, that's just stupid. Let me tell you, it's not stupid when you pull it from this world into that world. And when you apply something, and you have to take it from the spiritual realm, when you apply a spiritual warfare strategy, you pull it from the spirit world into this world. So when you apply the blood, when you apply the blood, I'm declaring the blood, I'm activating the blood, I'm speaking it, but I'm also, I'm also walking around, I'm talking like I know the outcome. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. I'll tell you a story now they brought up to me the other day. She goes, there was a time, Brian, I don't know if you remember, you didn't want to go to a place. And she goes, I watch you talk yourself into having strep throat. She told me this the other day. She said, you didn't want to go. And you kept saying, my throat's a little sore. And before you know it, I had strep throat. I literally talked it into existence. She told me that the other day. You better watch what you're saying. Death and life are in the power of tongue. You're applying something. You're either applying the lie and the deceit into your life. So if you're, if you're applying lies into your life, the enemy now has a foothold. So when I start speaking stuff that ain't real, and all of a sudden I'm applying that lie, and next thing you know, he has a foothold, and you wonder why your life's up and down. But when you apply the truth, and you apply the word, and you apply the blood, and you apply the armor, you got to speak it and you got to walk like it, talk like it. If when I was younger, I didn't mind getting into a fight once in a while if I knew I'd win. If I knew I'd win, I was all about it. But if I didn't know I was going to win, I had to get a little bit clever. Come on, somebody. But I imagine if I was fighting Mike Tyson, I'd put my money on Mike Tyson. I don't know about nowadays, but uh, you know, at least back in the day, I put my money on Mike Tyson. But we have that kind of assurance that when we apply the armor, when we apply the blood, we have victory. But when we walk around defeated, that's when the enemy can sneak lies. When we talk defeated, we're pulling other lies in and we're not then applying it because when you apply something, let me just break it down one more time. I love my wife so much. And you know, I have 55 names for her here at church. My little baby girl, Boo Bear, all sorts of things I say. Now, our first date, I didn't go on our first date all stinky. I took a shower. Before we went on that date, I took a shower. I cologned up. I put on my best deodorant, come on. I put on that deodorant that was $4.99, not $3.99. The Old Spice Special, come on somebody. The real man flavor, come on. Musky flavor, come on. Then I put on my best bottle of cologne, come on somebody. Curve, come on, you know what I'm talking about. Everybody's had some curve in their life. Come on, somebody. I applied the curve, and I just didn't put a little because I wanted to smell good. I wanted to last all night. Come on. But I walked around, Natalie, on that date like I was the cat's meow because I applied my soap, my deodorant, my curve. I had my best outfit on. I mean, I was looking sharp, Devin there. I brushed my teeth twice. Come on, somebody. I had mouthwash, I had the whole game going. Best watch on, best outfit, best socks, you name it. I walked in confident, cause I applied all my best stuff. It's the same thing when you apply the blood. 
You have to be confident in the blood, in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. The tomb is empty. He is risen. He is alive. I'm not confident in what I can do. I'm confident when I apply it. He'll save me, heal me, deliver me. And I walk around and I talk like it, I act like it. And when the enemy attacks, I said, no, 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 I got the blood on. No, 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 I applied the blood on my family. When the enemy starts attacking the boys, no, 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 the blood is on those boys. Come on, somebody. You got to apply it. Got to apply the blood. Got to apply the armor. Just like you use the sword, which is the word, you got to speak it. So you speak it and you declare those things, but then you walk around like you got it. Cause you do, not because of what you did. Not cause of you, but you applied because he hung on that cross and he shed his precious blood so you could have 100% total victory. Lift your hands and say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lift your hands right now and say, Jesus, Jesus. I apply apply the precious blood of Jesus, precious blood of Jesus. Over, my life, over my life in every area, in every area. Over, my family, over my family over my house over my, house. Over my, job, over my job over every situation, over every situation. and I will, speak, I will speak I will declare, I will declare victory. victory I'll walk victoriously I put on the whole armor I'm walking around protected I'm walking around victoriously Jesus thank you for shedding your blood and giving me the ultimate weapon and say hallelujah say hallelujah Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Say, I'm going to apply it every day. This is the power. When you understand, the enemy can't lie to you. She's got to remember that blood. Oh, no, no, I'm covered. You better go down the block. Come on, somebody. Actually, don't go down the block. Get in your position under my feet I truly believe a Christian can live 100% victorious life through Jesus doesn't mean you'll face trials or doesn't mean you won't face them you'll face trials you'll face tribulations you'll face problems but you won't always be calling in trouble times your relationship with God won't be I'm searching out God in trouble You'll be communion with him daily.